Hey guys. Uh, everybody got a performance of the night bonus tonight instead of a uh, fight of the night. Aguilera, Nam, Agapova, and Vittori all won $50,000. So congratulations to them. John Morgan, what do you got for me, buddy? <laughs> First night back cage side in the uh, in the apex, right? So I'm curious, kind of uh, why why you're there tonight. Normally, you've been watching in the back, right? It's the first one. No, it, for you, I, have you, you know, had it? Brett asked me that too. Yeah, no. I thought it was the first time you've been there. Uh-uh. No, I've been watching it out there. Nice. It was a it was a card that was kind of getting criticized a little bit coming in. I know you don't really listen to the critics much, but it ended up being a great night. I'm just curious. It always does. I was gonna I mean, say, do you take personal pleasure when it's like you maybe you hear people shitting on a card and it, it ends up being a, a night like that? It's just you know, listen, 20 years. How many, how many bad cards have we had in 20 years? I can count on one hand. Listen, not every fight is for everybody. Watch, don't watch this one. Watch the next one. Don't watch the next three. Watch the one after the Believe Me. We've got nothing but fights going on all this summer. So if you don't like it, don't watch it. But, you know, everybody's got to jump in there and give their two cents and chime, chime in. This card sucks. No cards suck. And if you're a fight fan, you watch all the fights. Your main event, Cynthia Cavillo. I know you somebody you had been high on. She had a couple setbacks. She moves up a division. <clears throat> what did you think about her first performance in the, in the flyweight division? She looked great tonight. You know, she fought the perfect fight. I think that uh, stand up looked good. Her ground game looked good. Um, going into the fifth round, she stood, didn't sit on the stool. Had a strong fifth round. She looked good. Her first five round fight, and uh, yeah, she looked good. It's an interesting position because Jessica was the number one contender. Now, I'm not saying that Cynthia should get a title shot next, but, right. you know, when somebody comes in to a new division and beats the number one contender right away, do you consider them to be, like, in the mix at that point? Listen, if you, be, if you beat the number one contender, you know, look at Gilbert Burns. It just happened to him, you know. When you beat number one, yeah. Last thing for me, uh, I know you don't like talk about the small cage, big cage difference, but everybody's been loving these fights, and they've, they've been saying it's got to be that cage. Are, are, were are were the fights in Jacksonville bad? They weren't. They were great. It's all an illusion. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's not true. Uh, Dan, I, you, a couple weeks ago when I asked you about the, there was a lot of uh, backlash on the bonuses. Uh, did you put a video out asking yeah. fans to pick? Yeah, so... I came in here last week and you guys were like, you know, people are bitching about the thing. And then I said, who agreed with me? So I was sitting there thinking tonight, you know what? I'm going to let the fans and the media chime in before, uh, before I get in the tent. <laughs> so, yeah, and Eric, uh, Eric ran a, what'd you do? You ran, ran the numbers on it to see what the fans and whoever from the media, you know, voted. And, uh, and we got percentages, so that's why we ended up just doing all performance of the night bonuses. So you were heard tonight before, uh, before you know, there's three of us that, that decide who's, who's going to get them. And uh, tonight, everybody got the pick. And Julia Vila got a big win. Uh, her first, after she, she herself said a lot of fights falling out, a lot of ish stuff going on in the world. Uh, she posted a video, a photo of you two talking after her fight. Uh, what did you say to Julia? Yeah, incredible fight. She, she had an incredible performance. She looked good. And what I told her was, I said, listen, if you feel good, if you feel okay, and, you know, adrenaline's still pumping, go home tonight, sleep, whatever, let's turn you right around and fight again. I, I, I love when kids look like that and turn right around. Her, Sugar Sean O'Malley, I mean, the, the, these kids that are on fire and have records like that, just keep them, keep them fighting. And then one final one. I'm, I'm, heard, I'm sure you heard about the incident in San Antonio. Uh, someone shot. How shot fucking up a crazy is that shit? And they this said, world is just fucking bananas right now. Uh, Agapova too. I think she should. She should turn around and fight again too. Well, the person that shot up that bar said, "Don't you know who I am? I'm a UFC fighter." But they haven't caught the guy or said right. the name. So as the president of a company. What goes through your head when you hear that? Well, if you don't think that I heard about that one at 7 a.m. this morning, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I just, I hope it's not true. But I hear that shit all the time. You know how many fucking bald guys in this town walk around and say they're me? <laughs> it's it's, it's mind-boggling, you guys. You you, If I told you some of these stories, you wouldn't believe it. It's, it's just crazy. So I'm hoping that that's the case. 
One final one. Uh, since you've announced Fight Island, how many fighters have reached out trying to get on a Fight Island card? Well, we, we, we already have the Fight Island cards filled. So, um, But yeah, everybody digs it. Everybody wants to be a part of it. And for us too, for me and my staff, it's going to be a fun, unique, you know, the, the, the safety zone, there's a 10 mile radius where it's just us. Nobody else in hotels, the restaurants or any of that stuff, it's just us. So it's going to be fun. All the fighters have their own private training facilities and it's going to be badass. It's going to be a different experience. You know, even, even veterans who've been in this sport for a long time and done a lot of cool shit, this is going to be completely different than anything they've ever done. I don't know. Um, obviously, President Trump is talking about having rallies again, stuff like that, which begs up the question, when can you get fans back into the building? What do you need to see before you start thinking about going into arenas? I think it's going to depend on, you know, th this whole thing is state by state or country by country. Uh, you know, um, I, I know that there's a couple of states right now looking to open up the fans and uh, we're talking to them. Would you consider doing a thing where you have fans socially distanced or would you rather just, if you're going to do it, wait until you can do it fully? Yeah, I won't do that. I won't do a 50% arena. I'll just stay here. It makes more sense just to stay here. Uh, in New Zealand yesterday, they had their first sporting event, rugby, with fans. Could you potentially have Israel Adesanya fight Paulo Costa in New Zealand? D w was, it, was it a full arena? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what's good is let, let them do that for a while and see how it goes and see what happens with, you know, depending on which network you listen to. Who the hell knows what's going on, so... At least if, the, if some of these guys in these other countries who were hit before we were, so they're coming out of it before we are, and they can, they can see how this thing plays out, and then we'll go from there. Dana, to follow up on something you said, what do guys get away with pretending they're you? A lot of shit. <laughs> A lot of shit. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, real quick with uh, Maria Agapova, we heard that she was sick following her victory. It was a quick one, so can you tell us uh, what's the status of her? Uh, no, she said she's sick. Huh? So just a little winded after the fight. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear. Yeah. <clears throat> Dana, you've talked a lot about how other sports leagues have already called you and how you socially distance and all your protocols. And I know you didn't say which ones, but what what, what have they? Do you, can you tell us what they've asked for and how well you guys have done making all of this safe in terms of every you know? And do you think it's progressing each time you do this? Well, we we've uh, we gave them the 30-page document that we gave to Florida and Nevada. We uh, we gave them the protocol that we used to reopen the offices here. Um, and yeah, I think this thing does get better every time we do it. It's getting more comfortable too. But I'm sure, it is for you guys too. And uh, I, you know, <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to go on. But if I got to get that Q-tip stuck down my throat one more time, <laughs> I'm so fucking sick of that. I'm really getting tired of it. I want to go back to the nose if we can go back to the <laughs> nose. But it's uh, I, I don't know how long this is going to go on, but. <laughs> It's getting old. Uh, one more. Uh, Mir Mirab called out Sean O'Malley after his big win. Do you have any? Who did? Uh, Mirab after uh, he won. Okay. He, he broke his own record for takedowns in a fight at bantamweight. Um, he wants to fight Sean O'Malley. This is now another fighter calling him out. So do you have any plans for Sean O'Malley right now? Yeah, <clears throat> like I was saying, you know, for, for, for these kids, that are young and come out of these fights quick, I like to turn them around quick and keep them busy. If you look at, you know, the Conor McGregor's, the Ronda Rousey's, and, and many others that fought a lot and stayed in front of everybody, especially right now where there's so many, you know, there's not much going on. So many people are watching. Like, this is everybody's time to shine. The sport is at a whole nother level right now, you know what I mean? Um, when we first started on ESPN, you know, if you looked at the ESPN totem pole, right, you had, you know, NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, these guys, right? And we were down like, we were like one notch above cornhole, okay? <laughs> now we sit in a much better place on the ESPN totem pole than we did, you know, when we signed this deal a year and a half ago. And, uh, which by the way, 
Cornhole almost outrated Top Rank the other night for their live fights. So congratulations to Top Rank. Bob Arum, just give him a shout out. Good job, Bob. You're fucking brilliant. You dickhead. Any other questions? Have a good night. I swear to God.